Hi everyone, uh, haven't done a video for a couple of years, um, so I thought I'd uh, show this one. This one is um, my automated, well, will be automated, solid state radiant generator. Now, uses microcontroller. Oh, apologies for the quality, I'm having to use my mobile because my camera's died and won't behave. Anyway, microcontroller in there. The transistor that I'm using, um, hang on, can I see what it is? It's a C5803. It's rated up to uh, 1000 volts or 1200, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, so literally, the microcontroller, um, we're just using the PWM on it. But we're using it in a specific manner. If you have a look at the LCD, it starts up. Uh, top left figure, uh, which has five digits on it, is the frequency. The one to the right of that, which is three digits, that's the duty cycle, which is out of uh, 255, with 255 being permanently on. And the figure below it is the reading from the ADC. Um, it's not calibrated, uh, and it's set up for high voltage. So, simple enough, um, quick note on safety, um, if you can see them there, they look like capacitors, they're not, they are polyfuses, uh, or thermal fuses, depending on how you want to look at them, um, basically um, they have one amp holding current, so if you're drawing up to one amp, they're fine. Um, but they trip at uh, 1.8 amps. Um, so literally, if something goes wrong, um, well, they'll trip and stay tripped until you disconnect the power. Simply enough. Um, now, this little board here has four push buttons on. It allows me to change things. So that's 2 kilohertz, 3, and so on and so forth. And the other set, of course, it comes down as well. And the other set allows me to change the duty cycle. So basically, it's a digital version of uh, Daftman's uh, solid state radiant generator. Um, in some respects a little bit more precise, but that's neither here nor there. Now, those two batteries there, big, uh, um, um, oh god, my mind's just gone blank, um, sealed lead acids, dry cells, they're out of uh, next door neighbour's uh, scooter, um, just reconditioning them for him and desulfating them. That one was uh, not in a good way. So they're done, and they've been uh, sat uh, waiting. Going to test them in a bit. The one that's actually hooked up is um, I've grabbed all. Well, I've grabbed four of the uh, um, uh, cordless batteries. Uh, this one's an 18 volta. Doesn't say on that side. Doesn't say on that side. It probably only says on the top. So. If we reset this back to one kilohertz, right? Simple multimeter is reading voltage 19.12. It's not too bad. Um, the cells in that are NICAD. Let's have a look. Yep, yeah, NICAD. Um, so they've been hammered a bit, probably in a, a bad shape. So, if we pull the duty cycle right down, you can see the voltage is changing. And going up. 
which is interesting because you're shortening the on time at the moment. Oh, I think I've just gone touch too far. There we go. So, at one kilohertz with 175, which is just over 50%. Right. You can see from the video, voltage has gone up. And also increase the frequency, which ultimately pumps more in per second, at least, anyway. So that's at 3 kilohertz now. What is the maximum? Um, I don't think I've been up to the maximum. That's 4 kilohertz. Did I just see it drop down? Oh, no. Let's take it up another K. That's 5 kilohertz. And no change. Might need to adjust the duty cycle. Let's have a see. There we go. Just a slight adjustment on the duty cycle. So we're now at 5 kHz and 186 on the duty cycle. Now, that's quite nice. It will pound the living crap out of that battery. Doesn't have an issue doing that. So, very simple setup. Uh, yes, it looks like there's a lot of wires. But it's not too bad. Just everything's all over the place. You've got like, um, I think it's about 14 wires to run the LCD. That group right at the back there. Let's just get wired up to uh, two ports on the microcontroller. So, yes, I've got a, a fan there blown on the heatsink for the transistor. It does get hot at high frequencies, um, which is its only drawback, really. Um, I want to see if uh, some of the others will, uh, some of the other transistors and FETs that I've got, see if they will. Uh, make a cleaner signal, let's put it that way, so they won't get quite as hot. So already it's up to 20 volts now. Uh, um, just a, another note, <coughs> that battery, uh, while it was reconditioning it on its own, uh, started gassing off after five minutes. Uh, it was stone cold and started gassing off. Um, which I don't think anyone has ever reported that. Um, so the reason for that is the frequency. When you run a standard Bedini, yes, you're using the rotor to switch the pulsing, but you've only got a limited frequency range. However, with this, you literally have, um, well, the minimum is 1 kilohertz, which is just what I've programmed it to be the minimum. Um, but, I mean, if we have a look here, closer. There's 8, 9... 10, 11, so on and so forth. Um, I'm not quite sure what the maximum is off the top of my head. But let's bring it down to 5, it seems to like 5. Now we also won't nuke the cells. <coughs> it does put out quite a bunch. I've zapped myself a few times with it. 
and it's not funny. Uh, kind of stung. The coil that I'm using is a simple one. Um, not much to it. M4 threaded rod, as per usual for me. Um, what's the wire? It's quite a thick gauge. I think that's a 23 gauge. 22, 23, something like that. Uh, God knows how many wines. Uh, 800, I think, off the top of my head. So, not using a trigger coil on this. It's just uh, a single filer coil. And simple setup. It works. It does does its job. Want to uh, get it uh, uh, set up so that it will calibrate itself automatically. Um, but the programming for it is a pain in the ass. Um, I mean, yeah, simple. Does does its job. Um, the only thing is, you do have to recalibrate it every now and again. Um, so you have to readjust the frequencies, uh, obviously because uh, um, the cell itself uh, changes what it will accept and what it won't accept. So, there we go. 20.12. Looks like it's trying to climb. Runs off 12 volts, by the way. Uh, big lead acid battery underneath the bench. Uh, what? Well, big. Yeah. It's a 35 amp car battery, wet cell. So, anyway, thought I'd show you that. Have fun.